Hey everybody, this is the Esoteric Cross. I make videos about how to gain your personal power while learning ancient secrets, and if that sounds like something that you're into, please hit the like button and subscribe and gain insight from this perspective in the cosmos. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the relationship between Kabbalah and Tarot. This helps us understand deeper and more hidden truths within these tarot cards. I feel like tarot can be a lifelong study, and we are always unlocking new information by meditating on these cards. Usually, in modern times, tarot has been popularized as a form of divination. When we look back on the history, these cards were intended to be a card game, but it's obvious that the person who designed these cards was a very knowledged occultist. These cards have a fascinating connection with the Kabbalistic tradition. I believe tarot is one of the most powerful tools for self-development, and also for obtaining gnosis, or knowledge of self, self-knowledge. We can use these cards to understand not only the archetypes that we contain, but also the journey that our soul is on. Each card is so rich with symbolism, and it helps us bring out new insights and wisdoms from our subconscious. The cards that have been very popularized are the Rider Weight Deck. The first tarot cards had different designs, but the basic concept was the same. 22 major arcana cards, 4 suits, 10 cards of each suit, and the 4 court cards within each of the 4 suits. The Rider Waite deck is very carefully designed to reveal secret truths about the self and the universe. This is why this deck is so commonly used. There are many different art styles and depictions of these cards, and many of them will help guide you to different truths, or to help you see the same basic idea with a very different perspective. The four suits in tarot represent the four elements. Swords represent air, the mental body, thoughts, intellect, and communication. Wands represent fire, the spiritual body, desire, drive, transformation, and personal power. Cups represent water, the emotional body, feelings, intuition, adaptability, change, relationships. And pentacles represent earth, the physical body, health, work, manifesting, money. These are the four aspects of our personal consciousness when it comes to being here in the physical plane. There is a known axiom within esoteric knowledge that states, as above, so below. This means that we are made in the image of our creator. These are aspects that are reflected in the cosmos as well. Kabbalah is an ancient form of Jewish mysticism that plays a part in just about every occult tradition and secret society. It involves this diagram called the Tree of Life, and what it symbolizes is divinity. These are aspects of divinity and aspects of the human consciousness. The roots of the tree are at the top, represented by kether, which means crown. This can represent the light of divinity. The light filters down through these sephirot, or spheres, into malkuth, which means kingdom. Malkuth is the 3D physical reality, and this is the fruit of the tree of life. All of the sephirot, or spheres, represent different aspects of the self, different aspects of consciousness, aspects of God. They are like degrees. Within the path of magic, we are starting in Malkuth and ascending this tree to reach divinity. There is so much to cover about Kabbalah, and it would be impossible to cover it all here in this video. I have a tarot course that studies how to read the cards in relationship to the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. And you can check that out in the description below if you're interested. On the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, we have 10 sephirot. There is a hidden sphere called Da'ath, so it looks like there are 11, but keep in mind that this is a hidden sphere. Da'ath means knowledge, and it can represent the abyss. So we have these 10 spheres, and we have three pillars. The black pillar is feminine, and is called the Pillar of Severity. The white pillar is masculine and is called the pillar of mercy. And then we have this middle pillar. It could be viewed at as the pillar of balance, but this represents the mediator, or I like to think of the spheres on this pillar as the children that are birthed of the spheres on the opposite pillars. You may also see these black and white pillars in Freemasonry as the pillars of Boaz and Yaquin. 
Then we have these 22 paths connecting the Sephirot on the Tree of Life. Each path is corresponded to a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Let's take a minute and talk about the emphasis on the number four. There are four worlds that this Kabbalistic tradition teaches of. The first is Atzaluth, the world of emanation or the archetypal world, represented by the Hebrew letter Yod. The second is Bria, the world of creation, represented by the Hebrew letter He. The third is Yetzirah, the world of formation, represented by the Hebrew letter Vav. The fourth is Asiya, the world of action or the manifested world represented by the Hebrew letter He. You can see that these Hebrew letters spelled yod He va He. This is the four-letter tetragrammaton, or the unpronounceable name of God, Yehoa. These four worlds can be represented here on the Tree of Life, separated by these veils. But remember, as above, so below. These four worlds are represented by the four elements. Just as we have these four elements or four aspects of our consciousness, the universe has that too, and that is represented by these four worlds. Asiya, the manifested reality, is earth, the physical, as in physical manifestation, represented by the pentacles in tarot. Yetzira, the formative world, is air, and represented by the swords in tarot. Bria, the creative world, is water, and is represented by the cups in tarot. Atzaluth, the archetypal world, is represented by fire and this is the wands in tarot. It is said that each of these four worlds contain the ten Sephirot attributes, hence the reason why each of the four suits in the minor arcana have cards numbered 1 through 10. They are the ten Sephirot on the tree of that world. The 22 cards of the major arcana are representing the 22 paths on the tree, and the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Take this further and lay the 22 cards over the Tree of Life twice while including the hidden sphere, Da'ath, and then you unlock even more insights. Learning these correspondences really unfolds your knowledge of tarot and your knowledge of self. Both Kabbalah and tarot are occult and esoteric traditions that are intended for you to understand and know the self. Knowledge is power. Take note of the emphasis on the number four. Four elements, four worlds of Kabbalah, four suits in tarot. There are four court cards that are for the four suits of tarot. There's a lot of emphasis on these four aspects that create the physical realm and houses consciousness. One great card to really showcase the relationship between Kabbalah, Freemasonry, and tarot is the High Priestess. She is representing the Divine Feminine and the Moon Goddess. See the crescent at her feet. She holds this divine wisdom, the Torah, and she is guarding the secrets of self. Notice the tree of life is behind her. The pomegranates are the spheres of the tree of life. You can see the black pillar and the white pillar, just like on the tree of life, but they are labeled as B and J for Boaz and Yakin. So these are the Freemasonic pillars on this card. She has a cross on her chest, and this is where Tiferet is on the Tree of Life. The yellow sphere that represents the sun, I call it the Jesus Christ Center, because this is the Son of God, S-U-N, and this represents the energy at the center of your chest, the cross of your body. And the Bible states that Jesus lives in your heart. You may find a cross on the chest to be a very common symbol when it comes to the occult. This card will correspond with the sphere of Hakma on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, and Hakma means wisdom. This is a great card to symbolize divine wisdom. Now, being that this card is on the white, masculine pillar, that suggests that this is an external quality. Though the High Priestess represents the Divine Feminine and the Lunar Goddess, and stands for intuition and other internal qualities, the placement of this card over Hakma on the masculine pillar shows a whole new aspect to this card that you would have not seen if you had not observed it in this way. Wisdom being an external quality is about the application of divine knowledge and understanding. When you understand and know the self, taking out action coming from this place, you are acting out of your divine wisdom. In summary, the High Priestess represents the internal feminine, passivity, subconscious energy, and intuition, 
But another message of this card can be to not dwell in that energy for too long. Take action out of that divine wisdom to lead you to the next step of your journey. I hope that this is something that's making sense. This is just a taste of some of the things that we'll be talking more about on this channel, within my Patreon, and also within my tarot course. If you're interested in learning more about symbolism specifically within tarot, I'm accepting enrollments at this time for my tarot course. We will go over the symbolism, how to read the cards, and also the relationships of these cards on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which is something that most courses in tarot won't offer. Class starts June 4th and enrollment ends on June 3rd. Make sure to check out the link in the description if you're interested. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for beginning ceremonial magic. We will discuss rituals regarding the four elements and connecting with higher states of consciousness. We'll also go over other energy techniques. If you're just starting out your journey in magic, feel free to set up a session with me. Check out the link in the description below for more information as well as to where you can book a tarot reading with me. If you want access to exclusive content and live streams, the link to my Patreon is in the description. And I hope there was something new that you were able to take away from this video. If so, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.